Hello there and welcome back to my channel. Firstly, I would just like to apologize and just state that I am really sorry that I haven't stuck to the filming schedule because I had some technical issues, but they seem to be kind of resolved at the moment. And so you can expect new content every Monday and Friday. I'm not a technical person, so this is a new venture for me. So please just bear with me. Thank you so, so much to all of you that commented on YouTube as well as private instant messaging on Instagram um, for the previous video on the Will Smith saga. Uh, it was really cool to see a lot of your comments, a lot of your questions, and please keep them coming. Let's see what you guys want to talk about and think about so we can elevate consciousness and work together to rebuild societies that are kind and bridging uh, societies that can help one another to grow and to love and self-love. So today's video is something that I see a lot in private practice as well as just everywhere we go is that the self-limiting beliefs of self-sabotage. So what is self-sabotage? It is pretty much how we stand in our own way. Now why do we do this if we want to get certain things in life? So if we want to earn a higher salary or get better relationships or change our body image, all those types of things are fighting a constant inner battle within us against the inner saboteur. Now, why we do this is for various reasons, is that we have to examine ourselves with a, a, quite a, a magnified lens to understand where this type of thinking led to self-sabotaging and self-defeating behaviors. Often it is a belief system, a core belief, that is repeated through behavior, even when good opportunities, good relationships, and things like that present, is the inner saboteur within us will sabotage it as kind of a confirmation bias or a self-fulfilling prophecy towards an inner concept of self. So for example, if you feel unworthy, if you feel undeserving, that you're not good enough, then of course you're going to choose repeated patterns of behavior or thinking to confirm that inner saboteur's belief of yourself. Now why does this happen? Is because it comes from the subconscious and the subconscious wants to keep you safe. How does the subconscious do this? It keeps you in the familiar. So if, for example, in childhood or through your relationships, you are so used to people pushing you away or not treating you as a deserving, worthy human being, you're going to repeat that. You're going to choose people, dynamics, relationships, events that will confirm that to yourself instead of really looking at people and situations and events that are deserving of you and your time and your energy is because it confirms an inner belief system. And so we have to examine the subconscious. So often happiness and joy can be really uncomfortable for people if they're not used to it. You have to teach yourself to really be comfortable with being happy and fulfill the self-fulfilling prophecy of a new belief system, a new core belief. So these self-limiting beliefs serve to be a challenge to upgrading your limiting beliefs. So we also have to look at where our parents come in. Parents, grandparents and generational ties in an embedded generational trauma bond of what it is that, that is serving as an inner saboteur. E.g. if you come from a family system that kind of suggests either verbally or through behavior that you are only deserving of love or acceptance if you earn love. E.g a certain type of body, um, a certain type of light or darker skin color, how much you earn if you have a degree, are you a sports person? All of those types of things will serve as a confirmation of uh, worthiness and acceptance and belonging if you have it passed down from generation to generation. Now, what's so important to understand is that it takes one person to break the cycle. In that generational bond and one person has a whole entire network of responsibility to be able to stop and examine and say no 
I am worthy uh, of love and belonging and acceptance and I'm good enough just the way that I am. I don't need to fulfill this whole in-group bias to be able to be accepted. So the first step for you to look at is to start looking at your own family generational trauma to see why it is that in certain families, we all have them in certain systems, even in organizations, you have to do a certain thing to be accepted and start to challenge that. Every family system is different. Every organization is different. Every community is different. Is that sometimes we follow in-group thinking to try and get acceptance. Now, another aspect of looking at the self-sabotaging behavior and thinking is that it's important to detach oneself from the thinking because if not it becomes a part of your identity i am not good enough i'm not worthy i'm not deserving we need to deconstruct so i attended this cpd workshop recently where the facilitator explained something that i really like i'm going to use it today is that when you go to psychotherapy the therapist helps you to look at the pixel in the picture of the whole picture and helps you zoom out to see the picture is you need to do that with yourself sometimes you do it by yourself or with an objective observer or people that love you is to lo start looking at your own thinking detached from yourself your own narrative of yourself then we got to challenge and move to an alternative view or, or narrative and reframe reframe that thinking how do we do that is we need to go back to the theoretical scene of the crime, the stimuli. You have to go and look back as to what happened. What happened to that inner person, the inner saboteur? How did it form? So, for example, if you do self-defeating things like you push people away that love you very, very much, or you don't think that you should take an opportunity to go for a new job interview because you won't crack the interview. Or you'll only do something if you know that you'll achieve the, the goal, the end goal. Or you'll be such a perfectionist that you won't be able to just do things that are good enough within the time frame that you have. Is start to look back. And if you can't remember, start to ask your family system. Ask the people around you. Have you noticed that I tend to do this certain thing? Have you noticed that I have this pattern? When did you first start to see it? So start looking within yourself and then start to look at your environment to help you unpack this whole narration is why is it important is because our thinking gets repeated and it actually becomes a habit so as soon as you start to become aware of the self-defeating behaviors and beliefs and thoughts you can stop yourself the next time it happens and we, you can do this thing that we call reparenting is that you actually need to speak to the inner child as a corrective experience now therapy it serves to to be a corrective experience but you can also do it with yourself um, as far as possible is to talk to yourself as soon as you start that sabotaging self-defeating behavior so you need to speak to the transgressor with empathy so for example if the person that implanted this in you through their behavior or through their their words is try and think of them with empathy as an example say a little child is wanting attention from their mom maybe a four or five year old and the mom keeps on shouting at the child to be quiet is the child could internalize that they're not worthy of mom's time or energy or that they're too much so what do they do they stop asking mom for things and then they self-sabotage in adulthood by not asking for too much by people pleasing by fixing so how we can repair that is to firstly look at mom in empathic eyes it's not to excuse behavior but it's to forgive and to look at people from their level of consciousness maybe mom had a lot going on or she was suffering with her own depression or there were other children or there was a relationship problem with mom or dad whoever it is if it's the same sex relationship is you first have to forgive that and then forgive yourself for doing the best that you knew how because as a child, you were dependent on your mom. So you couldn't at the time hold mom accountable because you were dependent on mom. And so on and so on. So looking at that generational trauma keeps the family safe. It buries the memories. 
So the first tip in terms of moving you from the self-sabotaging belief systems is to start seeing where you stand in your own way. Identify it. Look at where you procrastinate. Procrastination is another way to speak to that inner saboteur. Is often people that procrastinate are so anxious of failure that they will leave it to the last minute and do the absolute minimum just to meet the deadline or not do it at all. Another aspect is perfectionism, is when people are trying to be perfectionistic, is they believe that good enough, just doing as much as you can with the time and energy and skills that you have at the time, for them is not enough. Because perhaps they came from a family or they grew up in an environment where you had to achieve in order to be accepted, is we have to challenge that and wake up and know that every day that you take your first breath in the morning, you know, you wake up, you breathe in the air around you, that you're worthy of love and belonging. People pleasing is another aspect that we need to look at in terms of are you seeking validation for your inner self through other people? Is that you can do that to yourself very slowly. It is a step-by-step -step process, but remember that people pleasing is very draining and it's not the real you, it's transactional. Setting boundaries is another aspect that is so important is that are you spreading yourself way too thin in order to meet the needs of other people or are you trying to set really really healthy boundaries in order to just be as kind as you can to yourself and other people. Learn to say no. Sometimes with an excuse, sometimes not. You don't owe anyone anything. So the, the next as aspect is to, when we're talking about reparenting the inner child, is you need to actually look at yourself crouching down to a little child and imagining that the little child is talking like that to themselves. Imagine a little child saying, I'm so stupid, I'm so not good enough, I'll never be loved for what I'm doing. I wish I was better so mom and dad could love me. Now would you walk past a child and let them say that to themselves? No, you would crouch down or sit down, most probably, or, you know, get to the corner of the room with them and say to them, no, that's not true. You, you're so worthy of love and belonging right here, right now. You need to do that to yourself. You need to sit down with your inner child and start telling yourself, you are worthy enough. You don't need to be or do anything to be enough. You're worthy of love. We all are. Examine your thinking. Be so aware, like a meta thinking, like a person outside of yourself so as soon as you catch yourself in this narrative of doing something that is not healthy or good for you challenge yourself and also you need to forgive yourself when you give in to the inner saboteur because it is a process so it's i always say this to people it's two steps forward one step back because you're reconditioning the mind so also examining that if we have our repeated inner belief systems and thought processes of I need to seek validation from others, I need to earn more money, I need to be more physically fit or thin or curvy or whatever the story is, is that it serves as a confirmation bias. That's why one of the reasons as to why lottery winners they lose their lottery within one to five years is because they haven't worked on that inner belief system of a poverty mindset as in I will never have enough. So what happens? They have a confirmation bias, a self-fulfilling prophecy, as well as a, a confirmation that, yes, I will always be poor, I will never have enough. Now imagine those people had counseling or they worked with, it, with financial advisors and looked at looking at a, an abundance mindset. Is Your mindset is your golden tool to all your satisfaction, joy, contentment and self-esteem goals in all your life or all over your, your the lifespan. Thank you so much for tuning in and please join us on Friday where we will be looking at a co-regulation and self-regulation of feelings. Thanks so much.